Welcome to the first video in a series uh, introducing Fusion 360 to those who are more used to SOLIDWORKS. Uh, previously on MIT, done a SOLIDWORKS course. Uh, this will introduce you to various new ways of doing things. Uh, Fusion itself and the concept of primary, secondary, tertiary, and then using the history uh, correctly. Uh, for modeling in a kind of strange way uh, to move your design in Fusion. It doesn't show on my uh, cursor here, but a middle mouse click and a drag will move the part. Middle mouse click and a drag and a shift will tumble the part. Otherwise, it's all much the same as SolidWorks. I've got a data panel over here. I've navigated to where I want to put my design, which is untitled, and to get ready and get started, I just have to press Control S or Command S, depending on where you are. If it actually worked for me, there we go. So uh, this is going to be a pause drive two bit. Give it a name that makes sense. And save. It'll pop it into the data there. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, what we're going to be drawing or modeling is this pause drive bit. Um, standard Phillips style. It's mostly European, although it is starting to become much more common here. Go to Ikea, there it is everywhere. Uh, for us, we're gonna, we have a sketch to follow for dimensions, which corresponds to this shape. Uh, our end sketch is not going to look like this. We're going to go at it bit by bit. Nonetheless, we're going to be modeling. It's driven here, FX, there's something going on. And the bit is the standard quarter inch hex drive. So we're going to have two sketches. Draw this one first. Defines the main shape, the primary shape, and then our evolve, which is going to be probably doing some cuts. Some other things going on later. Let's get started with that. Our parts uploaded. There's nothing in it. If we look inside, we can see when it was made, who made it, is it used in other things, and who's using it right now, me. Nice. Hide that stuff. Uh, as usual with most CAD, we're going to start with sketches. And again, because we're going with uh, two sketches, one for the extrude, one for the revolve, I'm going to do the extrude first because in reality, that's usually where we start. Uh, with the dry, the, sorry, the hex profile shaped. So our first sketch on the base, which for me is Y, X, click that. Again, if you want to see where you're clicking, if you open up the browser, it'll highlight correctly. If you want, look at. If it's not already set, you can have it set so it looks automatically at the sketch under design, auto look at sketch. I hate that, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna arrange it kind of top with Z in the lower left corner. How do I find stuff somewhere up in here and create? You'll notice sketch is active now. There's another way, which is S for search, shortcuts, polygon. Uh, there's three here. This one's not what I want because it's not giving me a center point. The Both of these work, so one or the other. Snap to the origin. And if I want right now, I could type a dimension. I'm not really sure what it is. So it just kind of, it won't snap. It'll snap in place, but it won't create a constraint. Right, let me do that again. Undo. Uh, you can also adjust the number of sides here. Sorry, I should have said that. Edge number six, box hexagon is fine. Now, I do know the size of this. But I'm going to set up my prototype first, finish the sketch. Before, sorry, notice the sketch is still not fully defined, a little pencil there. Finish the sketch. If you want, you can always go home. Heck, uh, isometric. Let's do another sketch for the profile of this revolve on this face. Snap. Oh, snap with something. Rectangle. R. About 25 millimeters. There we go. Finish the sketch. Sketch one is the profile for extrude. 
and the sketch two is going to be my revolve. Rename those guys. You'll notice the history is active now, and the names show up. If you want, you can use the playhead to show things. As we're outside of sketches, we can drag the sketches still where they're unconstrained. Now let's start figuring some stuff out here. Oh, that's what I'm recording with. It's not much help. Although, hold on, maybe let's see what's going on here. So it's a quarter inch across the flat and we see this black fully defined or locked sketch here. It gives it away. We want to replicate this because it We'll see later as Revolve starts functioning, it's going to be what we want. So let's define this sketch first. Right click on it, Edit Sketch, Dimension, across the flats. Our document normally is going to look for millimeters, so if I want 0.25 inch, I need to type. <laughs> Missed it. I need to type 2.25 inch. It'll zoom down. I can pull that around after. Now it's not defined yet. So what's missing? I can start dragging things. Oh, it needs to know where it is. Our next sketch is actually on this ZX plane. So I want it to be horizontal. Pre picked up. Nice. So again, if you want, you can highlight that constraint, delete it. Go on. You can again as a little test. Here we finish the sketch. Looks good. Now in this sketch, I can edit the sketch by clicking anywhere on the sketch and do another constraint, which is might have to hover over that for a little bit to get that corner and that corner. It's fully constrained. Oh no, hold on. The revolve is still not constrained. Let's have a look. Uh, the height. Now, there's something going on with this point one twenty-five. So I'm going to go for twenty-five for now. So let's dimension this guy. Nice. We've got two sketches set up, all locked together. Let's do a test extrude. So I want this. This guy here, I'm going to do the extrude first. So extrude, pick the hex profile, pull it up. Can I just click on here? Uh, no. Can I pull it here? What's this thing do? Ooh, crash land for SolidWorks. It seems okay, but it's not what we want. Uh, 25, but I should be using geometry I already have. What can I do? Uh, maybe I can go to an object. How about right there? Sketches disappear. Let's have them back. So let's look at their dimensions. So let's show the dimensions. What if I change this? Does it work? 30. Oh, nice. So that looks good. So everyone's working. We have our prototype set up. Now, one thing we're going to do here is make sure that our plan works. How do we start making this uh, shape? So an undercut here. Notice it's not a chamfer. It's actually a swept cut. I wonder if we can start using something here to make this work for us. Maybe no. The temptation is to use another sketch. Do not do this. Instead, we're gonna re we're gonna change things up a bit. So we're gonna adjust the revolve, which has the undercut. Double click it if I wish to edit. And let's have a look at the sketch. That's the undercut, two and a half millimeters away from the center. And this oh, if it's revolved, this thing's missing its center line. It's actually five. So let's go with this. Sorry, phones are ringing.
Hold on. Got some work going on here. Start to mention in this guy. So I'm in the same sketch. That's important. It's 45 degrees and we need a center line. I wonder, can I just change this to the center line? Turns out I can, and I keep the profile and whoa, look at that, nice. Cuts it off right away. So I have two, as we call them, profiles. You can turn this off if you want. You shouldn't do that. If you're missing your profile, make sure it's turned on. Uh, that looks okay. Now, rolling with the middle mouse button. If I dimension this guy as shown, Back to fully defined, finish the sketch. Now I'm gonna do something old school here, which is I'm gonna try doing a revolve. Can I do a revolved cut? Again, it wants to pick this outside edge here. What if I want to pick the profile? If I click and hold with the left, I can see, aha, uh -huh, there's a profile. And then it goes, hmm, cuts it away. Nice. The problem is every time I want to cut an extra piece off, I have to do a new feature, waste of features. It's also counterintuitive when I start having all these revolves around. Is there a better way to do this? Turns out there is. Edit that guy. Don't delete it, just edit the thing. I'm gonna add a profile here. I've now selected both profiles, which of course deletes the entire extrusion. What if I, instead of changing it from cut, change it to intersect? This happens sometimes. It's not happy. This is what you should be getting. There we go. Sorry, there's a bug somewhere in the program. So what happened here? Well, nothing. <laughs> but there is an interesting thing here. I have both profiles selected for this revolve now. Two profiles. If I go in here and reselect this profile I don't want, we get a fairly interesting result here. The advantage of all this, if I go in here and start adding things, more edges, for example, say a piece like this, and go ahead and give myself the luxury of, it's sometimes a little hard to get it, you sometimes can also press control or something, shift and control. Ah, Change that to full if you wish. This is interesting. It gives us the chance to adjust things. Let's see if I can pull this properly here. So for example, you should be able to, if I can get it, you can move these things and start to kind of do a little bit of design intent here if you wish. So that's our prototype. We're gonna start adjusting these shapes or this one up here in particular to be able to get towards this guy. So we're gonna do some curves and lines, chamfers, all the rest. So that's it for this video. We're prototype up, ready to go. Two sketches, one fully constrained, the base, it's not gonna change. And then the revolve profile that we're using with a revolved intersection to get our final shape. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one.